Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside in a very, very wet and soggy North Carolina. Uh, today we are going to be working here in the Woodland Garden and we're going to be planting a host of gorgeous shade loving uh, perennials and some shade loving annuals. We're going to fill in some empty spaces here looking really forward to that uh, but yes it is currently pouring down rain here at uh, in dallas because we have been blessed for the past couple of days um, with a lot of rain we've already received probably like four inches of rain and it shows absolutely no signs whatsoever of stopping so the show must go on and we are just going to go with it and we're going to garden in the rain folks so this is not going to be a glamorous video whatsoever this is real life gardening i remember my mama told me years and years ago she said days like this where it's kind of rainy is maybe not as hard as it is going right now um, are great days to actually transplant and plant plants because they have zero shock and in the garden so that is what we're going to go with today because like i said Rain's not going to stop and gardening must continue around here at Creekside. Speaking of Mimi, I do have her um, helping me today <laughs> and the rain is just pouring down. All right, let's talk about what we're going to put in here. It's a good thing these uh, cameras are waterproof. So we have got a whole selection of eucharas, hostas, um, some, like I said, there are some annuals over here and then some beautiful lemon blush caladiums that prefer the shade. So we'll start with the lemon blush because that's uh, pretty easy. We've got these gorgeous caladiums. This is lemon blush. It does prefer the shade. So you could have up to maybe four hours of sun on these guys, um, but just a fantastic, nice, bright color that really works well in the shade coming back here as far as our annuals we have got the endless illumination um, bro alia and this is one of my all-time favorite shade annuals so here is your tag I know y'all love the tags part shade to shade when you're talking about a shade garden it means four hours or less and the endless illumination has these beautiful kind of star shaped blue purple flowers on it do a nice lovely mound so we've got those because i always have to have them in my shade garden and then we've got a handful of some uh very uh bedraggled double white impatience this is the rockapuco white again white in a shade garden really will pop and we only had four left up in production yeah they're a little uh like i said they're not in primo condition but they will be as soon as they get into the ground then we've got pastas okay we're gonna do this in a minute all right we're gonna go back at it folks <laughs> this is this is adventure gardening right here all right so i've got two of these hostas right here this is hudson bay hudson bay is just a really beautiful hosta variegated nice big big leaves on this it will be 24 inches tall and then when we flip it over on the back side of the tag, it tells us that our spacing is also 24 inches. Um, beautiful, showy, big, large mounds of attractive um, colored leaves, apple green jetting, creamy white center, and just an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, big presence of a hosta. Next door, we have Hope Springs Eternal. This is one of the newer ones. And the proven winners line um, you will notice that they all say shadowland so shadowland is kind of the series of the hostas hope springs eternal is going to be 22 inches tall you can see that it is predominantly kind of a lighter green with a creamy um, edge of a margin and oh dirty tags here um, the spacing on this is 47 inches so that's almost four feet y'all this thing is going to be huge um, nice roughly leaves on it nice crisp creamy white edges and this will have white flowers so hope springs eternal and then another new one is love story so love story you can see is in bloom nice very different kind of leaf to it more elongated has all sorts of different shades of green and cream in it and it is a gorgeous one it is a shorter 
It is only 14 to 16 inches tall. Um, and you can see that it has those massive, look at these flowers. The hummingbirds and your pollinators love hosta blooms. They come after them and they are just delicious to those sweet little friends of ours. It's gonna be three feet wide on your spacing and um, it is going to have, it says a gentle pie crust wave edges. No, that's fun. And then of course it has those nice creamy white edges. Now, as a little side note, um, we got these hostas. I know Hope Springs Eternal and um, Hudson Bay. I know we got those last year and they sent, sent us in um, Walter's Gardens and sent them to us in one gallon pots. I was not ready to plant them. I didn't have a space for them. I didn't know where they were gonna go. So uh, my sweet mama went ahead and kind of took ownership of them and moved them up to three gallon containers. Overwintered all winter, you know, just outside. And here we are in North Carolina Zone 7B, completely can handle the outside in, in a pot and sat out there all spring. So that's a tip. If you get a plant, because I know it happens to every gardener, right? You buy a plant or, or somebody gives you a plant, whatever, you come by a plant, but you're not ready to put it in the ground yet. You don't know what to do with it. Go ahead and move it up to the next size container and let it just hang out there. It will be perfectly fine. Just keep the water on it, keep it in whatever kind of conditions that it needs to have, whether it's shade or sun, and then just let it grow when the time comes, then you can put it in the ground. So don't feel pressure, like you have to get it in the ground right away. Just move it up, hang, let it hang out, and it'll be just fine. All right, so those are the hostas as the rain comes down again. And now we are gonna go for some eucharas. Eucharas or corabels are um, beautiful. They are evergreen here for us in North Carolina. This is the fun, this is part of the Fun and Games series. So the Fun and Games series, and this is hopscotch. Now I actually had hopscotch, these exact plants in my hay racks over the winter. I had them in there with some evergreens, just left them in the pot, and here they are with all their beautiful new growth on it. Um, hopscotch is going to be 10 to 12 inches tall. Your spacing is 20 inches apart. Super easy perennial grown for the foliage. Um, and it will do flowers, but you're predominantly buying eucharas for their foliage. This is a Velosa species. So it is, um, the Velosas are native to the Southeast. So I like to try to do um, Velosa species, and this is one of them. So it will do really well in the landscape. Moving on, we've got three of the beautiful, look at these. This is the Dolce Wildberry. And this is a massive popular plant for us selling at the nursery because of the color. Is it not just beautiful? I mean, it's got purple hues, it's silver. It is just gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, really nice big size leaves. Like, look at that. Nice, nice size. And then when you're comparing it to the hopscotch, right? The hopscotch has a lot smaller. So when you're bringing that into your garden, different textures, different size leaves, different colors, um, and interplay that really fun with each other. And then we've got one more back here. We have got the Dolce Frosted Berry. So the Dolce Frosted Berry has a little bit more of the silver tones to it than um, the wild berry does. But you can notice on the back of the leaves, look how purple the back of the leaves are. So it still has those purple and silver hues, not quite as large of a leaf as the wild berry. This too will be 10 to 14 inches tall. Spacing is gonna be about 16 inches. And this is actually um, a sport of the wild berry. So, there you go, thrives in part shade, will grow in full sun, not in North Carolina, my sweet friends, not in North Carolina, um, hardy in zones four to nine. So if you are one of my zone four or five people, maybe you can put this in the full sun down here in the south, mm -mm, don't do it, <laughs> they will burn. So you, we wanna put these in um, part shade to shade, they will be great. Um, so we're gonna set up the camera uh, the waterproof camera, I might add, 
We're gonna place these um, and then see how fast we can get them in the ground before we all wash away. Good times, fun, fun, fun adventures. We are some wet puppies, but that's all right. We have got all the plants placed. So let me walk you through and show you where everybody's placed. And then we're going to get these, we're going to get these babies in the ground and then we're going to go to the dry house. So uh, Mimi went to lunch. So it is just the, the wet dog and myself. So we're going to start up here um, closest to the gate, right? So here we have the gate, obviously the entrance. We've got the beautiful ruby slippers, oak leaf hydrangeas right here. Um, just fantastic. Love these sweet little petite oak leaves. Went ahead and decided to put the wild berries right here. They're nice, such big old plants. Um, and it makes a nice statement and a beautiful color contrast against those ruby slipper hydrangeas. So those three will go right there. Um, as we work around behind Brenna. Come here, B. Come on. Good girl. Um, we have the three love story hostas in a group. Now, you'll notice that I still have um, lots of beautiful available space right in here. Um, that is for a plant later on down the road, but I like putting these love stories next to each other because they're going to be the shorter ones um, and it plays really nicely their coloring plays really nicely off of the um, eucharas that are in here this is the um, oh shoot it's the the new one out of the the evening the ball gown series is it ball gown might just be ball gown i think it is just ball gown um, so we've got these three right here and then we went ahead and put the group of the it's a zoo around here y'all my alarm's going off i've got workers back and forth I got big kid going after to pick up little kids from BBS. Huh. And it's raining and I'm gardening. It's amazing. I'm still saying y'all, but here we go. All right. Um, so we've got the five of the hopscotches right here. Again, I like the color. I like the color contrast. It's got a little bit of dark relief to it, but it pairs really nicely with the Eucharist in the back. We've got Lenten roses all back in there. Um, so yeah, I mean, it all just plays super nice together. Mama and I were a little bit concerned if the ground was gonna be too saturated. Um, so we did a little test hole with the uh, auger and you can see though, it is not. Yes, it is, I mean, it's moist, but it's not completely saturated. So we are good to go. So that one can go there. Speaking of the power planter, I am using my um, nine inch 
auger today with the heavy duty tip. So we've got that right there. Everybody will get biotone um, as per normal. Now, if you can see this way, we have got that lovely ribbon of the linen blush all the way down. Really kind of ties in this space. So we just kind of placed them in there, went a little heavier on the corner, give it some weight right there. So we've got those. And then we went ahead with the two Hudson Bays, right? So the spacing on those is 24 inches. So that's about where we are from center. So 24 inches on center. So we have got that. Then we went ahead and put all of the 10, um, 10 of the Endless Illumination Broalia right there together. So they are in a nice grouping. When they all um, are growing in, there'll be a nice big like mass planting right there. Here comes the rain again. Uh, yeah, so as we continue, the linen blush continues. Then because we had seven of the frosted berry, we went ahead and kind of split them up. We did a group of four right here. This is a Father Gilla, a Mount Airy Father Gilla. And then we went ahead and did three right here um, with my four little Rockapuco double whites are right there in the middle. Again, they will get nice and wide and fill that in as like one big planting. And it just brings a pop of color, that whiteness, right, against the frosted berry. Continuing on down with the lemon blush all throughout. And then we went ahead and put the three Hope Springs Eternal down here. So we've got those three right there and it ties in really nicely. I'll have to check my spacing because these two look a little bit too close together. So I have to move somebody down just a little bit. But um, I would love to say we intentionally did this, but we didn't. Um, back here in the back, when we first planted um, the hostas and perennials in this bed, these two on the far end are Hope Springs Eternal. So we will have five of these guys of the same hosta in this space. So that is going to be the plan for today. That's a complete side note because you know I do that. Back here in the back, I had the black lace elderberry. Um, she is doing great. Like it is growing like crazy. However, she's not very black, is she? So you know what that tells me? It tells me that she's very happy and she has put on tons of new growth, but not getting enough sun because if it were getting more sun, it would be black. So at some point, it'll probably be this fall. I can't imagine that we're gonna do it going into summertime. We will move her and put her in a little bit of a sunnier location. Um, I put her in the deep shade because I was afraid she was gonna burn. So that just tells me not enough sun. It needs to get out and get some more sun. Uh, so you know that is gardening, right? It's all basically a one giant science experiment and you're just trying to figure out what works i'm pushing my zone on that black lace elderberry so now i know okay well she's happy she can handle the temperature the water's right the soil's good for her just not enough sun so when the time is appropriate more than likely that will be this fall so that way she can have good really root growth over the winter if i do it now i'm afraid um going into the summer and the heat going into the sun a little bit more sun it might shock her we don't want to do that so She's fine. She's just green. She'll be okay. All right. Bruna's back there chewing on some grass. I am going to get the power planter auger. I think I'm just going to go ahead and drill all my holes. Like I'm just doing an assembly line. All the holes. Then everybody gets by a tone. Then the plants are going to go in because the rain is not stopping. And so we're just going to go for it. So I didn't tell you the truth. I'm just gonna do them at a group at a time. Yeah, so we're gonna aug, fertilize, plant in groups. That way we can be making progress.
All right, my friends, we are uh, done for today. We are officially uh, absolutely filthy, soaking wet, but the plants are in the ground, so that feels amazing. Jerry came up, um, he had had a meeting at the nursery with a fella, so once he got free, he came up here and helped us um, get the rest of the holes drilled, get the plants in, so it's nice when you have somebody come in there at the end to ah, lend an extra hand. It is fantastic. Um, just to give you a really kind of quick overcap because I'm not gonna lie, I'm ready to go in the house. Um, we've got the wild berries up here. I love their placement next to the hydrangeas. Got those. Um, everybody, of course, love story. Got biotoned. We just had to kind of dodge some of the irrigation lines because of course they're underneath the compost mulch uh, the hopscotch fun and games right there those are all going to like fill in really nicely you'll still probably be able to see the individual mounds especially here on those on all of these plants really but it will just kind of fill everything in you notice here we have obviously a big color difference in the soil jerry went ahead and grabbed some of the black gold this is the um let me show you right quick spin without making you dizzy um it's just been raining cats and dogs y'all this is oh my gosh this is the um, natural outdoor planting mix so this is fantastic for amending existing soil um so when you have maybe that thick clay soil like we have right here that is less than desirable and needs more organic matter in it this is what is great for that we probably it would have made a whole lot more sense to put that down first and then drill the holes but that's all right but especially with those annuals we intentionally left the annuals like the root ball we probably left about two inches of the root ball exposed um, so half of the plant is in the native soil and then the other half is in the ultra outdoor planting mix that way because these are heavy feeders with the being annuals that'll help give some nutrition the roots get it all in there and they will be just fine so um yeah so we got that then going back here hudson bay all of the caladiums um poor brenna is just absolutely soaked to the bone can you tell she <laughs> i think she's over it i think she's ready for a nap um aren't you b are you ready to go inside yeah we go take a nap I think so. Um, the Broalia, then of course the frosted berry, just works on down and just then the back here with the um, three, <laughs> y'all my brain, the three back of the, uh, what do we call these things? Hope Springs Eternal, thank you. Hope Springs Eternal, it has been a uh, wet, wet, wet day. But again, it feels fantastic to have these done. They look great in here. Now, don't worry about the difference in the soil. We're gonna come back through here because I need to extend irrigation because we designed this irrigation that it can be added to. So we knew that when we planted and designed this bed, we had a lot of holes in here that other plants would fill in. So I can easily tap into this drip line add what I need and then just tie it back in there. It's what we call a closed system. So it all connects in there together. Um, this bed is all on its own, all unto itself. So I need to come back in here on a day that it is not pouring down rain and add the drip tube to these plants um, because it was crazy. We have gotten over four inches of rain in the last three days and there were holes that we drilled that were bone dry. That's because thanks to these trees. Um, so we will do that. And then once that irrigation is down, then we're gonna come back and top dress the areas with the, um, our compost mixture. So like we'll remulch it. So all of this color, discoloration will go away, whether it is from the red clay or the ultra outdoor planting mix, all that color will <laughs> disappear and the whole bed will re again be the same color. So. That is the plan. We're not doing that today. We're done. I'm gonna go, we're gonna hose off Brenna. I'm gonna hose off my shoes and we're going to go get showers and have lunch and get into some nice comfy um, sweatpants because this is the perfect day for it. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, inspirational, and probably a little bit funny today, me being out here in the pouring down rain. But 
like I said, girls got to do what a girl's got to do. We so appreciate you. Thank you for guarding with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.